Before we get this video underway, I wanted to show off a picture. This is a very old picture, and I don't know when it's from, but you could probably guess it's from, at the very least, a decade or two ago. It features two young hockey players standing in a locker room. One is wearing a blue Under Armour shirt, the other one is wearing a black shirt. The names of these two dudes go as follows. On the left, you have Jack Eichel, and on the right, you have William Nylander. Yeah. When these guys were young, they played hockey together. And if you go as far back on Elite Prospects and try to see just where these guys were when they were children, I mean, the William Nylander thing, it goes back to Team Maryland and the Chicago Mission back in 08, 09, 2010, 2011, Jack Eichel only has the Boston Junior Bruins on his Elite Prospects page spanning back to 2010, 2011. So I don't know where in the world this picture would have come from, but it is real and it is featuring two guys that we're going to be talking about in today's video. Now, William Nylander is the main target, because as we've been talking about this entire time, heading into the regular season, the guy needs a contract extension for 24-25. He's on the last year of his deal, making $6.9 million a season, and as a 27-year-old 5'11", 196 right-handed player, William Nylander is worth a lot more. 87 points, 82 games played last year, 40 goals as well. William Nylander has been a beast, and as we have talked about, he is arguably more important than the other big-name Leafs who did not produce in the postseason in the second round. William Nylander, on the other hand, did. Because there has been no contract extension handed out just yet, there has been the floating idea saying that the Maple Leafs could trade Nylander away, make it so that they don't lose him to free agency, and the Johnny Gaudreau situation does not happen again. Brad Trilliving was the guy at the helm of that situation in Calgary, so now, since he's literally the GM of the Maple Leafs, he has a first-class ticket to seeing a similar event unfold. However, when it comes to the Nylander trade price, we haven't really had any indication as to what that could look like. Until now. We're going to go over onto an article on NHLTradeTalk.com because what the writer over here does, the writer is, who is it? It just says NHLTradeTalk.com. Okay, my bad. They talk about the price and what exactly is labeled by Mark Masters on the Got Your Back pod. This was also tweeted out by Ryan Rashog of TSN, which is kind of how this got trending in the first place. But a reporter says the Maple Leafs are looking for a Jack Eichel-type trade. When answering why the Maple Leafs don't just trade Nylander for a legit defenseman, it was revealed that it's an Eichel-type return that the Maple Leafs are looking for. Link is going to be in the description if you want to read this article yourself, but while a guest in the Got Your Back pod, Mark Masters was asked by co-host Jason Strudwick why the team doesn't just make a blockbuster deal that helps them and seems like the obvious answer to their problems. Masters responded, at least for this coming season, Nylander is the best contract they've got. He's under 7 million, and he scores 40 goals. Masters then suggests that this might be why the Maple Leafs are willing to let this whole thing play out with Nylander and not rush into a trade, because the forward is a solid value and because they expect that he could produce the same, if not more, this coming year, and removing him from the lineup regardless of what it's for would be a mistake. Masters said, The belief with the Shanna plan and this Leafs philosophy has been, if you have these four guys, then you're going to have a chance every season, and you're in the playoffs which they don't take for granted. And this sort of aligns with the similar idea we had brought up in other videos as well, where if the Maple Leafs don't find an acceptable trade for William Nylander, they could, in theory, just decide to walk him out to free agency in 2024 and let him go for free. Not because they want to lose him for free, but because in using him in the 2024 playoffs, they could see him more so as their own rental, as a guy that they get on for the last part of their contract and use in a valuable role in their team. It's kind of twisted to think about that because, of course, there's a lot of history here. Nylander drafted by the Leafs 2014, it's been a decade, etc., etc. But if the Maple Leafs were interested in winning it all now and not really caring about the future, then they'd be making trades for rentals anyway. They'd be trading for guys that are expiring in 2024, and they'd be trying to completely load up like they did last year. And so if Nylander is still on the team by the end of the year, when the playoffs start, etc., and he doesn't have a contract extension, he could be seen as yet another rental-type piece, who belongs on the team regardless. Either way, this is what Masters notes, that Brad Trilliving will probably try to locate a massive trade and see if an opportunity were to arise somewhere throughout the season or maybe in the offseason. He called it a Jack Eichel-type trade. Now, 
the article then dives into what does that mean, it's not going to be one for one, etc, etc. Let's go over to the real Jack Eichel trade, and then also talk about the ideas floating around about Jack Eichel and the proposed trade, because this is also very important when discussing how expectations can form in terms of evaluating players and what they should be worth in terms of trade value. Jack Eichel was traded alongside of a third round pick, a conditional third, for Alex Tuck, Peyton Krebs, a first and a second. All the picks in this trade were conditional. If you want to take a look at it, Alex Tuck is a 70 point guy in the Buffalo Sabres. He's a very good player. Peyton Krebs, young prospect, he has really good top six upside as well. A first round pick and a second round pick, yeah, those are great. And then going the other way is Jack Eichel with a third round pick attached to it. Now I will say, back when this trade was made, there were some people kind of concerned as to the return because Jack Eichel getting traded alongside of a third was seen as somewhat of a weird thing, but the idea floating around was similar to all the same ideas we had seen for other big name players. We talk about this all the time with the Patrick Canes, the Pierre-Luc Dubois, the Chicharins, the Jack Eichels. Whenever big name talents enter the trade market, you always seem to see the same type of return floating around as the ask. A first, a valuable roster player, and a valuable prospect. Now, for the most part, the Sabres got exactly that. A first round pick, which turned out to be Noah Uslan, a valuable prospect in Krebs, a valuable player in Tuck, and then you just had an extra swap where the Sabres turned a third round pick into a second round pick, moving up a few spots in the draft. So there is some extra value there, but if you wanted to really think about it, if you cancel out the second and the third, the Sabres essentially got what everybody was rumoring. Rumoring? Is that a word? I'm not too sure. What everybody thought Eichel was going to go for in the first place. Valuable player, valuable prospect, first round pick. And if William Nylander goes for something similar, it would align more so with that idea of being a Jack Eichel type return. Now the question is, is William Nylander worth that amount of stuff? If you want to get a player who can get 70 points like an Alex Tuck, or if you want to get a top four defenseman who could contribute maybe 30 to 40 points while also being very good defensively, then you could say that's the main roster player attached. William Nylander would also need to be traded for a prospect too, there would need to be a big name coming back over to Toronto to bolster up that future core, and then a first round pick on top of that. So if the Maple Leafs trade Nylander away for a really good defenseman, a really good prospect, and a first, is that worth it? Or is that a bit of an overpay? I don't know about you, but I do feel like Nylander has not been in that Jack Eichel territory as long as players like Jack Eichel have been. Like, it's a little different for defensemen. Of course, Chitrin was kind of in that same territory where his reputation said that he might be able to get something like that as well. And then you have other players like Dubois, like Patrick Kane, like Dabrinkit, whose names were always floating around there, and that was the ideal trade return idea. But Nylander has more so been a victim of circumstance, I feel, when it comes to evaluating his talent. Because on paper, just what Nylander is today, consistent 80-point guy, consistent 30-40 to 40 goal guy, and consistent point-per-game guy in the playoffs, that's a really valuable asset. It's just because you have Tavares, Marner, and Nylander over, or not Nylander, excuse me, Tavares, Marner, and Matthews overshadowing Nylander and the big behemoth cloak of a team that is the Toronto Maple Leafs, it's interesting how our perceptions have not allowed us to see Nylander in that same light as the Eichels, as the Dubois, etc. You could even say better than the Dubois and the Lyonnais, I guess, too. And so, I want you to let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about this entire idea that the William Nylander trade price is somewhere in that Jack Eichel-ish trade return type? where it's a first round pick, you got a heavy prospect, or not a heavy prospect, but a heavy magnitude prospect, and a very good roster player coming back. Do you think the Toronto Maple Leafs could get this done? Do you think it gets done now or sometime over the next few months? Or do you think the Maple Leafs just completely crap the bed, they don't trade him away, they use him as their own rental, and he expires and he leaves in 2024? In that case, the Maple Leafs would have lost him for nothing, but if they win a Stanley Cup in the next 12 months, then it doesn't matter. They're champions, it's fine. But that's not guaranteed. It's one team out of 32, after all, who wins the Stanley Cup, and the Toronto Maple Leafs have not been lucky enough to get past the second round without looking good in the second round, too, in like 20-plus years now. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you feel about the Toronto Maple Leafs and the William Nylander trade price being similar to the Jack Eichel trade return? Thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.